Good day. Welcome. This is your Daily Med with Lady V. Today in talking about discipleship, what does it cost? Today we will look at the test of discipleship. Uh, in St. Luke chapter 14, verse 25 through verse uh, 35. See, Jesus stresses the priority of discipleship. God first. Jesus stressed the need for total commitment to him. So one he says we must love him so much that our love for family seem almost like hatred by comparison. Saint Luke 14, 25 through 27. Saint Matthew 10, 37 through 39. He says we must count the cost before we make our commitment. Our lesson tells us in verse 28 to verse 33. Discipleship is not an easy road. We should be a good influence on others. He tells us in our lesson today in verse 34 and 35. And in Saint Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 through 16. We must prefer God or love him more than all else to be saved. Saint Matthew 22, verse 37. The motto of the Bible is God first. And we see a few things that is demanded of us in the scriptures. He says we should prefer God and Christ to all others. He said we should bear the cross. He says we should follow Christ always. And he says do these things daily not weekly or for a while. So we will see from the scriptures that great multitude of people was following him. Saint Luke chapter 14 beginning at verse 25. Jesus wanted the people to know that there is a cost in following him. It says large crowds were traveling with Jesus and turning to them he said if anyone come to me and does not eat father and mother wife and children brothers and sisters yes even their own life such a person cannot be my disciple he says whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. He says, suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you saying, this person begins to build and wasn't able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If it be, if he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciple. So Jesus here was saying, yes, there is a large crowd. The Bible says great multitude followed the Lord. Jesus was saying to them, listen, 
Yes, I know you are here. But let me tell you what it will cost you if you really want to follow me. As leaders, or most leaders, would be elated by such widespread interest when there is a great crowd. But we know that the Lord knows the heart. So Jesus was not looking for people who follow him out of curiosity with no heart interest. So he began to let them know he was looking for those who were willing to live devotedly and passionately for him. And he says, and if it is necessary, they would even die for him. So he began to sift the crowd by presenting to them the stringent terms of discipleship. A time the Lord Jesus would woo men to himself. But after they begin to follow him, he winnowed them a sifting as to take place it's not just a crowd for a crowd seek but truly those who want to really and sincerely follow him and this is what Jesus was doing right here and now in this lesson he first of all he told them who Followed him in order to be a true disciple, they must love him supremely. He did not even suggest that man should, he, he did not suggest that man should have bitter hatred in their hearts towards whether their children or their father or their mother or their brothers or their sisters. Rather, he was saying to them, um, emphasizing that they must have the love for Christ. And that love for him would be so great that it would seem as hatred in comparison. In St. Matthew 10 and verse 37, no consideration of family ties must ever be allowed to deflect a disciple from the pathway of full obedience to the Lord. The Lord loves family. He specializes in them. But what he is actually saying, Jesus first. When we put God first, he is in the right place. If we put him anywhere else, then he is not in place or in our lives as it were at all. So actually the most difficult part of the first term as he shows it to them of discipleship is found in the words and his own life also. So Jesus was saying it will come to the time, it will come to the test when the believer, when the one who wants to be a true disciple must eat his or her own life also. So instead of living self-centered lives, we must live Christ-centered lives. Instead of asking how every action will affect ourselves, we must carefully look at how it will affect Christ and his glory. Remember, we are living for him. We are walking in his footsteps. We are following him. So consideration of personal comfort and safety must be subordinate. As human beings, we like our safety. As human beings, we like our comfort. But Jesus was saying to be a true disciple, those things will be affected. And we have to know that in 
following him, many things that might have happened to him or have happened to him might eventually happen to us. What we want to do is to make sure we are glorifying him and we are making known what the Savior says. He said that if we did not love him supremely, if we didn't love him more than our families, more than our own lives, we could not be his disciples. And what he says, there is no changing. What he says, he means it. The Savior's words are absolute. He tells us what to do, what it will take to follow him. He was not dependent on the large multitude that was following after him. When he began to make this sifting, I guarantee you that large crowd that was following out of curiosity may have decided, this is not for me. It is too hard. I cannot do it. As a disciple of Christ, the true test will come and we have to show him that we are willing to love him supremely, to love him more than ourselves and to love him more than anything or anybody else because there is no halfway measure. It has to be all the way. God bless you. Thank you again for watching. Please like, please subscribe, please share. Also, I welcome your comments. And don't forget to visit my YouTube channel where other teachings are there for you. Daily Med with Lady B.